we have certain expectations, right. especially upon like-minded people mm -hmm. or fellow Christians. Right. It's like, well, they're certainly trustworthy. So yeah. if they say yeah. they're going to do this, I'll trust that they're going to do that. And right. then bam, they don't bam. do it. And now you feel betrayed. Right. And you start really judging harshly yeah. the other person without ever considering that you too have been have guilty of doing the same thing in some way or another. We're always looking what the others are doing. When we have a that, log in our own. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, Wendy, preach yeah. that. It's so true. We judge others yeah. and then we forget to judge ourselves. When you have been put in that place of being betrayed, a promise broken to you, how, how should you respond? What do you do when you feel like I just got burned? Do you go and try to get revenge? Stories stir the soul. Stories reveal. And stories heal. In this podcast, we will give you an inside look at someone who's had a life-changing breakthrough. Real people, real stories with real breakthroughs. As a health and wellness expert and coach and Todd as a men's mentor. We've seen firsthand what God can do when it comes to a breakthrough. So lean in, listen well. This could be your biggest breakthrough. Hey there, and welcome to this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. I'm Wendy Pett. Hey there, I'm Todd Isburner. Well, hey there, aren't we all chipper today? <laughs> I like the way you did that. Hey there. <laughs> hey there, hi there. <laughs> That's very casual and very personal. Well, hey, I think That's your personality, casual and personal. Known our audience long enough. And I can cheery, get personal with you. And you're happy I and am. you're positive. Hey, you know what would make you're me really happy? You're always optimistic, not all the time. but No, what? okay, I'm pretty optimistic, but what would make me happy is if you are listening to this podcast, uh -huh. number one, that makes me happy. But if you have not yet gone to yourbiggestbreakthrough.com uh -huh. and downloaded the free audio compilation of six amazing mm. breakthrough stories and you get a free ebook it's called unstoppable but go to yourbiggestbreakthrough.com and you can get that free today that seriously would make me happy. I, I mean we, we could spend the rest of the uh, the, the episode the here hour? Just talking are we gonna be here an hour you, better say you an never hour. know if we keep <laughs> pushing these things but really you have to do yourself a favor yeah. and share it with somebody else the ebook is really a simple read uh, it's going to take you less than an hour to read it. And there's six phenomenal stories. Yeah. And then the, the audio, they're compilations. They're taken from the podcast. They're edited down. So you get just the core of what's being communicated. But these life-changing transformations will so inspire you. Build your faith. Come on. What are you waiting for? All right. See, I'm all pumped up. Okay, Todd. Promises, promises, promises. You just said oh. they're going to get all built well, up, pumped up. Okay. But we do. We promise I can you will. <laughs> I, I, I really believe that those those will deliver on that promise. But you think about the political environment we're in right now. And I don't know when you're listening to this, so we won't go into any details about the politics of I think of the any day. year. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good Any point. Any political year. Seriously. But you hear all these promises, <laughs> yeah. promises, promises. And then it's like, when are you going to make good on them? And it seems like there's, there's, this, there's this constant habitual pattern within our country, within our own personal lives, where there's just a lot of promises made and a lot of promises that are broken. A lot of betrayal. Basically. That's really when you peel back the layers. Mm -hmm. That's what you're starting to feel like, yeah. um, especially if you if you feel like you've been burned on something, right? Yeah. It's like, how could that happen to me? I don't understand why in the world um, people make promises if they're just going to break them. And then on top of that, uh, I get burned in the process because I believed you. Yeah. We think about, I mean, just think about our government for one. Right. Right. I, I think sometimes we're really getting burned by our government. Big time. Because or, there are certain promises made. And they're not delivered. And I got to pay yeah. taxes so yeah. that they'll fulfill their promises and they don't. And then I feel like, you know, I'm just getting burned in the whole deal. Right. And but, even like the education system. Oh, I mean, that's, that's a, like, that's a whole podcast within itself. Like that's a. Yeah, because you want your, you want, you want the educators to deliver yeah. on what they're promising to give your child. And speaking but of I, which, I feel like real quick, I feel like we're getting burned um, generationally because of the education system. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like all these promises and then uh, they do the opposite and yeah. mislead and, and betray but you know, you us. Can, you can pull, pull that right down into your own family. Well, that, there, there are you times go. That's true. That, That's true. Uh, your kid promises to clean his room and doesn't deliver. But then or you we promise, as parents, yeah. Gonna, hey, guess what? We're going to go fishing on Saturday. And oh, then instead sorry. somebody invites you to go golfing or whatever. Right. But you get the idea. This is not some sort of uncommon, unfamiliar thing for you or for us. Right. It happens 
all the time. I mean, it happened way back when. Think of like Jacob and Esau. Uh, all right. I'm thinking about major, Jacob and Esau. That was major betrayal. His, uh, his mom had a whole setup. Oh. So he would get the blessing. Yeah. Think poor, about that. Poor Isaac in his old age. Talk about taking advantage of an old right. guy. Right. <laughs> right. couldn't it's see. He was kind of out of it. And you're right. <laughs> You're right. Why are we laughing? It's terrible. I don't know. You brought it up. Well, because we were just talking about it in our Jacob prayer Nisa. chairs the other yeah. day, and that came to mind. The deception that the was deception, involved. The betrayal. And, yeah. and look at how the betrayal followed Jacob throughout his years. Like, he just kept, yeah. you know, like, you dish it out, you're going to get it. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a really good, that's a good example. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm just, I'm thinking about how sometimes we feel like, you know, that it only happens to us. We get this right. victim mentality. The truth is mm. it happens to all of us. I mean, this is not some foreign thing that just occurs where you terrible. feel like you got burned. It's not fun ever. No, no, no one, no one is exempt. That's no. the, that's the point. Yep. And I had a, by the way, this podcast today is dealing with what? Betrayal. How to handle how betrayal, to handle it right? So in a godly way. Yeah. Yeah. And, we're going to get to that, but first let's talk about <laughs> ways in which we feel betrayed. I'm just going to give you a quick example because this is sort of what generated all this. Um, uh, I had I had hired a repairman to take care of a certain number of items. He needed some money in advance, so I paid him in advance. He could go get some parts and whatnot. And so I, he said, yeah, I'll be back there Tuesday. Well, then it was Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday never showed. Now I'm texting. I'm not getting responses back in the text. He ghosted you. So, well, not quite. <laughs> then, I, then I'd call and then I'd maybe get a voicemail. But nothing but excuses. Oh, I'm going to be there Thursday uh, and I still have to get this and that. And it went on and on for six weeks. <laughs> We're going back and forth. He had my money. I had nothing back from him. Uh -huh. And finally it came to the point of he just, he just disappeared on me. He ghosted you. Oh right. my! I, it's like I can't. What the heck? What happened? How in the world? <laughs> what the? What the? Why did he take advantage of me? I, the, so anyway, I could go on and on talking about how I reacted initially to feeling so betrayed. Did you by a guy who Christian promised like to? Do, Todd? No. Oh, okay. I did not. Not at <laughs> Is first. Is this a confession? <laughs> I got there, but it took a little while. Right. I'm learning now because of these kinds of opportunities to respond uh, differently more quickly. We'll, we'll, we'll get it's into good. that. But that was a, a really a penetrating feeling of betrayal and broken promises and just really got me. Right. And none of us want to be betrayed and none no. of us want to, we, and we don't want to harden our hearts thinking that everyone's go out to get us. Like that's, that's not yeah. what we want either, right. but we have all had situations. I think of a time within my business where I was partnered with somebody and I worked really closely mm -hmm. uh, with that partnership and had high expectations, but also the promises on the other end and yeah. worked with this person for over a year and nothing was delivered as promised. And so I was very frustrated. I felt betrayed because of the, the time it took away the time and money and energy that it took away from, yeah. from my business and even my family. And, um, yeah, I was very disappointed. So did you start to question then, um, you know, like, so what is this person really all about? Did well, it, because did this it, is a Christian person. Yeah. Like, like it can so happen in the church. I think, that's a, I think that's yeah. a big part of it. Yeah. We have certain expectations, right. especially upon like-minded people mm -hmm. or fellow Christians. Right. It's like, well, they're certainly trustworthy. So yeah. if they say yeah. they're going to do this, I'll trust that they're going to do that. And right. then bam, they don't bam. do it. And now you feel betrayed. Right. And you start really judging harshly yeah. the other person without ever considering that you too have, have been guilty of doing the same betraying thing to others. in some way or another, small or big. But let's, let's, let's just talk but, for a moment. I'm okay, sorry. The, the expectations thing. I think that's another lesson that I've learned over the years. Stop putting your expectation on someone else, regardless of what they tell you about yeah. who they are and what they're going to do. Stop building such a big expectation for them to have to deliver exactly like you want it, when you want it, how you want it. Well, it may not be exactly because all of our standards are, well, are yeah, different, yeah, yeah. but I don't, I don't think it, there's anything wrong with having an expectation when it comes to a business transaction. Well, that's a good right? point. Like, yeah. Especially if you, there's a contract well, that backs it up. Okay. Right. <laughs> but what about, I mean, I just, I don't know. I guess I was just thinking, I don't want our hearts to get hardened thinking yeah. that everyone's out mm. to get us and we're, we, we can't trust anybody ever. And, 
you know, and, or get onto ourselves like, yeah. oh, you're so stupid. You're naive. Well, I think you're that's, a fool. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think we can go there pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, when, and, and then we start to really um, reinforce ourselves to stop trusting yeah. what other people say. I wonder but, what Joseph thought. Joseph? Yeah, in the Bible. Is there a neighbor? Oh, the, oh, the, oh, Joseph in the Bible. We don't have yes, a Joseph okay. neighbor. Joseph, the one of the- With his brothers. Yeah, 11 siblings who sold yeah. him out. Yeah, right? like, I wonder what he thought. Talk about betrayal. Jacob was his daddy, and of course, uh, Jacob was the deceiver, and now his kids were doing the same thing. <laughs> Interesting. So, hmm. so what's your point about Joseph? Well, because he could have really hardened his heart. He yeah. he went through so much with the brothers, and then he ended up at Potiphar's house, and then that whole well, situation. Well, he was sold, sold into slavery. Okay, you tell the story. The whole well, he story. was sold into slavery. I just feel like they should know. He was. <laughs> you should in, know Joseph's story. <laughs> and then after being sold into slavery and doing a good job uh, managing Potiphar's household, uh, Potiphar's wife, crazy wife, Potiphar's wife decided she wanted to set him up. Yeah. And so she did. And he ended up in prison for, for 13, 13 years. years. And uh, I mean, Joseph was a good dude. Oh my goodness. And that's another thing. No good matter dude. if you're so good or bad, you can still get betrayed. Yeah, that's what? Right. That's right. What are you laughing at? Joseph was a good dude. <laughs> what? What do you want me to say? I don't know. It doesn't seem to elevate him to the place that he really needs. He's, yeah, he's a good dude. Oh, that Joseph, that Joey boy. Yeah, he no, was uh, a fine young man. Well, th yeah, no. so we could go on and on telling that story because right. look what God did. The betrayal and because look what Joseph God did. Was so faithful. He was so faithful. That's and when it. his brothers came, not knowing that he was now ruling Egypt. And the way in which he wait, responded. Wait a second, you interrupted. Hang on. I know because. This yeah. is good. Okay, go ahead. So the brothers come because he's ruling <laughs> Egypt. They're in time of famine and he's in charge of distributing the food. And his brothers come, not knowing it's him, asking for food. And after a couple of instances where he sort of set them up, he finally reveals himself to them. Well, they're shocked. They're horrified. They think they're going to get killed, all of that. And what does Joseph do? He just loves them and he feeds them. Forgives and he them. cares for them. Yeah. Forgives them. So we're going to get into that, that in terms of how to respond when you feel betrayed or when that you actually have been betrayed. is some incredible character traits. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus. So let me just go back for a second okay. of what happens. The, I mean, I'm going to ask our listener viewer to, to just take a moment, think about an instance where someone broke a promise to you. Maybe it was a big deal. Maybe it was a small deal. Nevertheless, you felt like, well, I can't really trust them. They just like betrayed me. They make these promises and they don't keep them. So what were the feelings that then accompanied your response? And for you, when you talked about your business uh, uh, partnership, uh -huh. I know you were hurt. I was very hurt. That was one of the first Because it wasn't feelings. the first yeah. time that something like that's happened. So, so I was... Um, angry. I was a little resentful. You I, felt I a little victimized. victimized. You yeah. felt maybe not stolen from necessarily, but well, your dream. my time, my dream. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, sure. And then it kind of led you to a path of, well, I just, I'm just not sure who I can trust anymore. Yeah. And in my case, it led me to not only that, not only all of that, but it also led me to tremendous anger. And seriously, an honest confession. I really, I want to get revenge. I want to go find this guy. <laughs> what are you going to do? Figure out a way to make him pay. How much money was it? It, it, it was... wasn't that <laughs> much. <but laughs> wow. That's not the point. Okay. Okay. Then after all of those reactions <laughs> that you have had, I've had, we've all had. Human nature. I started to feel guilty. Yeah. I'm probably a little not, embarrassed in not, front of God. Like, no, I'm no, so sorry I even was no, feeling this. Oh, no, no, not that kind of guilt. Oh. <laughs> no. Guilty for being so stinking naive. Uh, <laughs> like, not guilty what is for wrong wanting with, revenge. What is wrong with you, Todd? Come on, wake <laughs> up, dude. You can't trust everything. Dude. Quit being such a nice guy. All right, so you get the idea? I get I, it. I get I it. I think that's what people go Yeah, for. yeah. But, you know, you have probably betrayed someone, too. I mean, we have. What? Yeah, you have. Oh, what? yeah, you have. <laughs> Let me tell you about him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But no, All I mean, right. I, you know, you asked uh -huh. me when, before yeah. the show started, you know, when have you betrayed someone? I'm like, I don't know. I'm sure I have, but it doesn't come to mind. Isn't that yeah. um, convenient? Well, isn't that telling of how we, forget we our own... view yes. life yes. and our place in life? It's like, we're always looking what the others are doing when we have a that, log in our own. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, Wendy. Preach yeah. that. It's so true. We judge others yeah. and then we forget to judge ourselves. 
So we are guilty. Uh, come on, just take a moment and fess up. You have broken promises to others. Don't make them turn off you, this podcast right have, now. No, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay with us. You have caused <laughs> others to feel betrayed. We forgive you. You're forgiven. didn't follow through on something that you said you were going to yeah. do in some way or another. That person, you know, is feeling like, wow, I don't know if I can trust Susie Q. Yeah. So what do you or do? Billy, or Billy Joe. Billy Joe, Billy Jack, Billy. <laughs> so what, what, what do we do? do? When you what do you do? Burned? Yeah, it's one thing to, to acknowledge the fact that, okay, we've all gone through this and we've all been guilty of doing it to others. So when you have been put in that place of being betrayed, a promise broken to you, how, how should you respond? What do you do when you feel like I just got burned? Do you go and try to get revenge? No, let me, let me just back up for a second. There is a case to be made for making certain things are um, made right so yeah. that you hold accountable. So you're not just a doormat to yeah. things happening. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wish I could do that with all of the products and services that I've bought because of ads that set me up. And okay. Then I got betrayed. First of all, promises. you are a marketing <laughs> person's like dream. I, yeah. I mean, you want to pitch something to naive. this guy, he'll buy naive. it. Okay. I mean, I'm telling well, you. only if I think it's going to work because of all the things that the <laughs> well, ad tells me, right. all the promises it makes, and it's then like it a... doesn't happen. So, I, I, so what I'm saying is you can't make it right with the with the vendor of the business you're not going to go back and say well you betrayed me because you didn't keep the promise and my hair is not growing like as thick as like you said it would blah 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 <laughs> so <laughs> sorry to get off on that tangent but so what so what do you do i first and foremost what's the first thing that you do well i personally think you should pray first but you uh, mentioned well that you should before the show get perspective I, but i think if we pray first then you get better perspective mm. Like, let's have that little argument. I'm not going to argue <laughs> that one because that's probably very true. But yeah. I, I but was your thinking. Your perspective is you, important. Yeah, because you got to pull back. You got to yeah. you got to get neutral on it. You got to. Yeah. You've got to neutralize your emotions. That's good. And you've got to use your brain and think it through and right. get some perspective, and stop thinking that somehow you should be spared. And stop responding in your emotional state. Yeah. Yeah. Just pull that's, back. Yep. Neutralize yourself, and again, re remember. Um, there's no guarantee you're going to be spared from any of those kinds of things. So stop telling yourself that shouldn't have happened to you. Right. It That's happens. Good. And remember too, that you've done it to others as well. So yeah. keep the right perspective on it. That's good. Yeah. And, and definitely, definitely pray. Pray. <laughs> and I got thinking as we were talking earlier about when we pray, how when we pray, we really want to identify with what the Lord wants and who he is and what he's been through when mm. he was on this earth. Right. Right. So, he was you, definitely betrayed. I mean, you betrayed <laughs> I mean, him. You're, right. You, All of it. Right. We betray you. him often. Yeah. Yeah. When we make certain promises that we're going to be this way, live this way, do these things, and then we don't. And so in reality. But thank God. He's so full of forgiveness and mercy he and has grace. Forgiven yes. Us and yes. our, yeah. our weaknesses and our betrayals and our sinful nature has been just removed as yeah. far as from the East is from the West yeah, in, yeah. in the Lord's eyes yeah. because of Jesus. So yeah. that's the good news. <laughs> well, but I think um, it's a great opportunity when you're in that spot to really relate to what the Lord has gone through and then how he would have us go through it. So I yeah. literally, I wrote a prayer and I won't read the whole prayer, but I'm just going to read a little bit of the prayer that when this, <laughs> when I got perspective <laughs> and I neutralized my emotions towards this whole deal, here's what I prayed. I said, Jesus, this is familiar territory for you. You've been betrayed, lied to, lied about, misjudged, insulted. And from a human standpoint, mm -hmm. you, you were burned by the very people that you gave your life for. And yet you love us, even knowing what evil potential lies within. And maybe that's why in John's gospel it was recorded as you saying, trusting no man, for you knew what was in a man. I mean, think about that for a moment. Yeah. Trusting, you, don't, you don't trust people, you trust God. Right. Because we all have these character flaws. So you can't expect like somehow you're going to escape that. And then I continue my prayer and it's abundantly clear, Lord, that not only did you model it in your own life, but you require your true followers to act or react the same way. And you did what you taught us we should do. Yeah. And some of those things are to forgive your enemy. 
the offender. That's what he taught us. Yeah. And, and we so, have great opportunity to do that when Absolutely. You know, when and I think betrayed. about uh, Matthew 6, 14, 15, for if yeah. you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others of their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. I mean, that's huge. We do. We have to forgive people yeah. because we're all, we just all fall short of the glory of God. I yeah. mean, uh, but it doesn't mean that we need to forget or, or mm. fall into prey of that betrayal, um, you know, situation again, we need to become wise, but we have to forgive and that changes everything. And we got to pray for them because we want people to become more and more like Christ and mm. to have a, uh, you know, their character to be strengthened in Christ. And if they are falling short, we need to lift them up in prayer and mm -hmm. intercede basically. Well, Jesus said, pray for <laughs> those who persecute yeah, you, pray for your enemies. And it's sometimes hard. those who betray you become an enemy. Yeah. Uh, Jesus also taught us not to seek revenge. Like, like there's, there's a pay it, there's a, yeah, there's a pay it forward, but there's not a pay it back. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. good. Uh, he, he also taught us not to judge so that we won't be judged. Now that doesn't mean be a naive fool and take everybody at their word. It means more stop judging their character because you don't really know what's all going on on the inside. You don't know their heart. I think, I think we are called to you know judge the actions but that doesn't mean we are the ultimate judge and therefore condemn right. who they are and what they're doing. Yeah, that's not our, our job. Um, we just need to stop breaking promises. Like if you promise someone something, yeah. just do it. Follow through. <laughs> or, no, no, no. I got a better idea. What? Don't make the promise. Oh, like, hey, I, I mean, promise seriously. I'll give you a call later. Oh, or I promise I'll. Hey, I'll be praying for you. I promise I'll pray for you. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's so oh. easy to, to, to mouth those things. I, uh, Wendy and I do that to each other. Um, well, we catch often. each other yeah, and and say, okay, don't promise that if you're not going to keep yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to follow <laughs> because through. Because actually, that's one of your love language things. Yeah. Like, if if I promise Todd, and if it doesn't come through, and because sometimes we just say that word flippantly, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, I promise I'll do that. I promise. And yet, he's thinking, all right, she promised she's going to do it. Yeah. And I literally just forgot. Like, it was innocent, and it wasn't as big or important to me as it was to him, but I promised, and then it causes some conflict. So... I try not to use the word uh, promise All right. <laughs> very often. Can you promise you're not going to do it? <laughs> can't promise. promise? What? <laughs> I can't promise. That a girl. <laughs> Don't promise something you're not sure you're going right, to be able right. to pull off. <laughs> and then another thing is to surrender and let it go. So surrender like the guy in Florida that was doing. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, but, what? No, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to tell you the, 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 the rest of the story, which I'll do in a moment. Oh, okay. Anyway, so he, he just needed to surrender it and let it go instead of it festering, because actually that does more harm to you than it mm. does to the person that doesn't even know that you're dealing with contempt or anger or any kind of yeah. hostility. But literally, it affects your, your health at the cellular mm. level. So it's only hurting you. So letting it mm. go and putting your trust in Jesus and not people is, is the key. So back to the guy in uh, that was doing the repair thing for me. Um, uh, he, he was ghosted for about six weeks, uh, maybe a little longer than that, in fact. But once I got neutralized and I got perspective and I started to, to do these things that we're telling you now, I literally was praying for him, not praying against him, praying for him, because I figured something's going on in this man's life yeah, yeah. that he didn't deliver and in a sense stole my money. And I, I was shocked <clears throat> when I got a text from this guy. Oh, and he started to explain that he had all this. these things come up and he made a lot of excuses, but he did say, look, I want to make good. And I thought, oh my gosh, he, so this guy wants to make good on the promises that he broke. And so we, over a couple of weeks, we were going back and forth and ended up actually meeting together. Mm -hmm. And I think he was really nervous thinking I'm going to punch him out. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, he, he gave me my money back. Okay, Well, were your text messages like, no, I didn't threaten him. No, okay. I, I did not threaten him. No. <laughs> I did not. I, in fact, I start. I took the other approach. Okay. Good, I started to good. commend him for being honest. I started to commend him for wanting to make things right. Oh, yeah. I know that this helped the guy become better, much person. better in following through on things. Sure, sure. So, so praying for this, getting, you know, your emotions neutralized, not judging that other person and, uh, you know, just doing some of the practical things that Jesus taught us to do can have a payoff. I'm not saying it's always going to turn out that way. It did for me, and I thank God wanted to reinforce, look, just do things right. the way I've instructed you to do them, and I'll take care of the rest. But praying for our enemies, you know, quote-unquote enemies, I mean, prayer unlocks and yeah. shakes loose a lot of 
yeah. of stronghold. So maybe True. there's someone that's dealing with a, a serious addiction or a stronghold, or there's something going on that only God can, mm -hmm. can help shake loose, but the, the power of prayer can do that. Yeah. The other, a couple of other just things that we need to, to pay attention to as we look at what Jesus wants us to do and how he and what he modeled for us is we do need to be wise and we need to be discerning and your discerning comes from the, the listening of the Holy spirit. within yes, you. Yes. So if, if you're, if you have the spirit of God in you, you have every resource ever imaginable to be able to deal with things in life. That's right. Because if this stuff, you know, you attempt it on your own, you're just going to fail. But when empowered by the Holy spirit of God, you can do these things and you can have the discernment. You can have the strength. You can have the forgiveness. You can have the love. You can have everything that Jesus has because he's inside of you. That's right. You just have to surrender and let him have his way. Yeah. Now, one of the things that um, you and I it's talked a, about it sounds too. sounds so trite. I, I no, don't, but I don't mean to sound know, trite. It, it's not. It's, it's really, it's the truth. It's the way it is. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, way to go, Todd. That's good. <laughs> right, Andy. <laughs> no. Promise? Promise? Yeah, I promise. That was good stuff. No, but before the um, the show, you talked about how, you know, getting treated unfairly doesn't have to burn us. You said it could ignite us. I'm yeah. like, what? Ignite us into more flames? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it did me for a little but, while. Yeah, but it could. No, I, I got thinking that. about it, seriously. Instead of feeling like, you know, I've been burned. It's just no fair. I'm tired of being burned. <laughs> victim, <laughs> thinking, victim, victim. What if instead you just switch around? Like, you know what? I've just had an opportunity to be ignited. Opportunity. That's so good. An ignited opportunity to be more like Jesus. And again, mm -hmm. I don't mean that to sound pie in the sky sappy. That's a reality. Yeah. God brings these opportunities to us to conform us to the image of his son, Jesus. Yeah. And then if at all possible to reach out and even help those who have maybe betrayed you or turned against you. Mm. So I really believe yeah. that if we will adhere to what Jesus taught us, yeah. it'll keep us from being bitter. Yeah. Resentful. And revenge. trying to take revenge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We can live free and at peace. Yeah. We really can. That's what we want. Yeah. And we're going to have that confidence. I really believe we're going to have the confidence that no matter what, when you get burned again or betrayed or somebody breaks a promise, big or little, that you're going to have the, um, the peace, the confidence that, wait a second, God is in control. He's just brought me an opportunity to become more like Jesus and to reach out, pray for this person and do what I can to lift the whole situation up. So the bottom line is we, we surrender yeah. to him and we trust him to do good things in and through us in spite of the world we live in yeah. with lots of broken promises lots of and lots of betrayal and also uh, an awareness that we too have to be very careful not to do those kinds of things. Yeah, that's so good. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough and hopefully it may be helped you see betrayal in a, in a different light and maybe how you can show up in a situation differently next time you're betrayed and keep you from even betraying somebody else because yeah. you'll think twice. Yeah. And, and not that this episode's the end all like, Oh, I listened to your biggest breakthrough. <laughs> yeah, I'll never, never betray again. I'm never going to break a yeah. promise again. In fact, I'm never going to make a promise. Right. Right. But you know what I mean? We hope that this yeah. gets you to kind of stop and pause and think about it first uh, before we, deliver or don't deliver a promise and just offer empty promises. It's yeah. just, it's just not good for either party. So anyway, God bless you. And we appreciate you. We really do. And that is a promise that yes, we really indeed. do appreciate you. And if you enjoy this podcast, please give it a rating, a review that will help it um, kind of go up in the algorithms and other people can find this incredible podcast. We have amazing people that we interview oh. and it's just such a, an it's just an honor. To yeah. Do the it, show. It, and I really do hope Wendy yeah. and I are just so hopeful you will just take a moment and you'll share it with someone yes, else. Please do. The review really does help. I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't have time to do the review, at least go in and, and like it uh, or can subscribe you do that? to it. Can you do the thumbs up? Subscribe. I, yeah. I, you can do all that stuff. Yeah, you can. It's not that complicated. It's right yeah. there on that page. Uh, so please uh, just follow through on that. Yeah. Don't promise that you're going to do it. No promise. Unless please. you're going to do, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. God bless you. And we'll catch you next time on your biggest breakthrough. Take care. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, we love spending time with you right here on Your Biggest Breakthrough Podcast. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. 
But until then, just head on over to yourbiggestbreakthrough.com where you'll find some free resources and information and a place where you can comment and we would love to dialogue with you there. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.